Hi, this is Paul, and this is the tutorial for the manager um, indicator suite. So, this indicator suite is designed to maximize your profits and give you a set of rules and indicators to, uh, to take aggressive or conservative um, profits on your trade. So, why did we do this? So every trader can get in a long or a short trade with literally hundreds of different trading indicators really, lots of different strategies. Uh, but most of the time they always struggle with trade management and to maximize profits consistently. So consistently means having those same rules to abide by when managing those trades. So the manager combines price action different volume behaviors and special EMA bias clouds each with four different settings to allow for day trading and swing trading strategies our algorithm works behind the scenes to display the information in your chart to to allow you to quickly sensibly and repeatably make those decisions for managing your trades it's about repeating the same strategy all the time to maximize those profits not second guessing so a few simple things to remember when you're using the manager. Have the manager running on your charts at all times because you don't know when you're going to get in a trade, especially if you're scalping or day trading. And so ensure you have the selected, uh, you know, you've selected that correct settings for the management of your trade. And those settings will go through in a little while. And follow the rules discussed in this presentation and tutorial to optimize your profits of your long and short trades. So follow the rules. So this is well. These are the settings that, that we have there. Now this is the trading view version. Uh, the same settings. It looks slightly different in each one. Whether it's motive wave, think or swim, trade station, MT4, um, you know, Ninja Trader. Looks slightly different, but the same settings are still there. So default settings are day trading moderate. So that would be your default setting if you're day trading. So. A lot of we've got a lot of day traders using our software so we put that as default then we have a day trading aggressive and you know if you're scalping off the one the two or the three minute you may want to start off with day trading aggressive settings on on this uh, the manager uh, so that's something you would consider or something we'll discuss later is actually use changing to aggressive when we get certain moves uh, when we're in a trade We've got day trading conservative, so maybe you're day trading on the 15 minute, or you know you want to be a little bit more conservative and allow it to run for the for the whole session, and that conservative could be a good setting for that. And then obviously the swing trading setting as well. We also use a day trading conservative for a more aggressive type of swing trading uh, setting. So there's some styling that you can do. You can change the volume candle colors, but we the way we teach this is we need the green, the red, the gray, the cyan. So to help you identify that that volume behavior, uh, the average uh, above average volume at the moment is set to circle and cyan, uh, but you can change the shape of the color and you can change the, you know the color as well and then obviously below average volume at the moment is set to blue circle and that goes below the candle. Uh, I would suggest you don't change where it actually goes but if you want to change the color uh, and the shape you can do that. The fast MA and the slow MA that's just the bottom of our bias cloud. Um, I suggest you, you can change those if you wish but the main important thing is the MA ribbon. Uh, do not change those green and reds they are set to to identify when it changes from green to red bias there on that EMA cloud so first thing we're going to look at is average volume um, we're going to go through this quite briefly and then we're going to look at accumulation distribution then we're going to see what it looks like on the chart so uh, with average volume by knowing the total volume on a candle you know you can understand the power or influence on on a given instrument the greater volume the greater influence for the price to change so if we can compare each candles volume over a given period and work out the average volume then this helps us identify the momentum when a candle has volume above that average or indeed falling momentum when the candle has less than average volume as well so there's no need to use these fancy formulas and tools the managers are all for you and identifies on the chart uh, if each candle has higher 
than average volume or lower than average volume or is in fact neutral the same you know it also determines the correct look back period to work out on so you don't need to look at this very uh, you know formula you don't need to draw lines of best fit uh, forget all of that the visual that you get from these dots up above and below and it doing it automatically gives you an instant um, you know an instant look at that behavior so some basics first understanding the volume we're going to look at volume accumulation candles and volume distribution candles so as well as those average um, indications that we get those average volumes whether it's above or below we need to understand the actual vo volume of that particular candle as well compared to the previous candle because that's quite important so an accumulation candle is when people amass or accumulate more of an instrument whether it's crypto or futures uh, at the ask so putting in buy orders uh, than at the bid so putting in sell orders in a single sort of candle time frame whether it's a day whether it's five minute or, or, or two minute or 15 minute so if an instrument has two or more accumulation candles we can say that it looks pretty strong or bullish uh, remember, remember for the second accumulation candle the, the, that the volume of that candle has to be higher than the previous accumulation candles volume as well so if we look on here we can see uh, this is just a volume chart so this first volume is here where my um, cursor is and then the next candle has higher volume so that's classed as an accumulation candle the next volume is pretty flat the next candle has higher than the previous candle so that is accumulation candles that momentum still building to the upside and then further the next candle has even higher volume so that's another accumulation candle that momentum's really going now and then we get another accumulation candle so that momentum is even going even further so we're building that momentum there's more uh, traders putting in buy orders on each of those candles and giving me more volume so what does it look like on the chart for the manager we've got average volume and bullish candles on the manager chart so we're going to go through what those means what those mean so first of all remember we, we color these candles so a green candle is an accumulation candle so it has, has higher volume than the previous candle in this case we can see some really good contraction on price action but the volume is increasing there's more buy orders on each candle so whether that's in a five minute or a daily candle there's more buy orders coming in so the, the you know the momentum is bullish then we can see here we've got higher than average volume this cyan dot here so not only as each candle starting to increase in volume the more buy orders going in there's actually that's higher than average volume as well so that's really good momentum going here then we get some gray candles so these really don't have higher highs they're up candles but they have less volume than the previous candle but look they're still higher than average volume so that momentum is still bullish then all of a sudden we peak out so we get another green accumulation candle with higher than average volume with that cyan dot up above then we get a gray candle then all of a sudden we get some indecision here on three candles they're all up candles one of them is an accumulation candle but they're all lower than average volume this is a sign that you should be looking to tighten your stops or if you get and we'll go through a scenario where you get a down candle uh, within with higher than average volume that's the time to get out so it's a warning sign if you like that this this current bullish move is running out of juice now if that continues to go sideways and pulls back and is lower than average volume then it's probably going to run out of juice and it's what what we call a low volume pullback against the trend uh, and it's a sign to stay in uh, so again it's not necessarily a, 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 a signal to say get out it's just a sign to say hey guess what that bullish volume has run out uh, we may be pulling back or going flat but it's it's not 
um, it's not higher than average volume. The volume's dropping off, so it, it, you know it should resume that bullish trend. But be careful. And we'll go about through the rules and what we can learn from these to help you manage it as we go along. So let's just look at volume distribution first, because um, you know we go we'll go down as well. So. So since we are giving out or dispersing, we're really selling our instruments. So we're selling gold, we're selling oil, we're selling Ethereum or whatever it is. So the first major point to note about distribution candles is that it's related to the selling of an instrument, not buying, which is an accumulation. We've just done that. So this is the most important piece of the puzzle when looking at distribution candles. For a candle to be considered a distribution candle, the candles not only have to end down overall, uh, okay, from the open uh, of the candle, but there also has to be more volume traded than the candles before, so it has more um, um, more people selling. Okay, so an instrument, if an instrument has two or more distribution candles, then we can say it looks pretty weak, bearish. Remember again for that second distribution candle, the candle volume has to be higher than the previous distribution candle's volume to get that momentum to go down. So for a distribution candle to be considered heavy, um, the volume not only needs to be greater than the candle prior, but also greater than the average candle volume as well. And we'll go and look at a chart on that. So um, volume increases are you know, more acute compared to longs when we're going down. Um, things go down faster than it. gravity is present in all markets, and you will notice that. So we can see here, this this candle here has much more volume. That's a distribution candle. And again, the next candle is a distribution candle again. But then we get a, a lower candle. Okay, that's fine. And we'll go about. We'll talk about that color in a little minute. But then the momentum picks up again. Distribution, distribution, distribution. Okay. So now, what that looks like on the chart: average volume and bearish candles on the manager chart. So this is a bearish move. We've got higher than average volume, okay, with the cyan candles up above, which is a good sign. We've got those red distribution candles, so that uh, that volume is really, really picking up here and coming down. Now, then we get those candles where the 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 volume compared to the previous candle is less, so that's called in cyan but we still have that higher than average volume so that momentum is still pushing down and then we start to get some um, some consolidation some support but they're all low volume candle lower than average volume at the moment so we at the moment we're still considering that this is a low volume pullback against that main trend so to be aware but not to panic is the criteria there even though on the right here we can see we have uh, an accumulation candle a green candle so higher uh, higher volume than the previous candle and it is a bullish candle but it's still lower than average um, volume so there's no reason to panic and start to get out just yet so we see that low volume dot there that blue dot below the candles there so price action is very important. Combining price action knowledge with the volume aspects we just discussed is a key skill uh, and taught in a separate video. Uh, the link will be in the description of this video so you can go and see how that volume, you can combine that volume with, with price action and certain um, candlestick patterns to help you understand those potential reversals. So the bias EMA cloud. This cloud is adjustable with four different parameters, and we went through that earlier on in this uh, tutorial. So green uh, on the on the bias EMA cloud is for bullish bias to the current move, and red is for bearish bias to the current move. But when the green changes to red, this is your conservative exit for a long trade. Okay, when the red changes to green, this is your conservative exit for a short trade. So the cloud is advanced ahead of current candle to help give you plenty of warning. Plus also we have those different settings to give you aggressive, moderate, conservative or swing trading settings as well. And we're going to go through examples of that in a second. Okay, so 
let's look at day trading on the moderate uh, setting. So this is the default setting. So this is yes, Euro, US dollar on the five minute. Again, I can use that on the TradingView version and other versions because that particular broker FXCM provides volume for that. If, it, if your broker doesn't provide volume, then you're not going to be able to use the manager. Volume is a very critical part of managing trades and understanding behavior. So we have the red bias cloud popping along there. You can see this current price action. Uh, we did come down and then it's going sideways and trying to pull back. Majority of it is lower than average volume. The higher than average volume that we get are down. Count is a, a big distribution candle. We can see the cloud thin on this pullback here. Uh, but majority of these candles here are red distribution candles with higher than average volume. That's shown as the momentum is still to the downside. And again, if we're just using the bias EMA cloud on the moderate setting, it doesn't change green. So we stay in the trade and then look what happens. We then go from, you know, moving down slowly to a big parabolic move. And we can see here the and we just explode a view there that the bias turns to green at that point and that would be our exit at 1.17633 so that's using that moderate day trading setting now this is the aggressive setting one thing to note here we've still got the the cloud red during this move but it's not a parabolic move it's a slow move down and you can see here the cloud just momentarily turns to green so if you're following the rules you would get out of this trade on this point and we'll, we're going to look at lessons learned by this um, in a couple of slides uh, again th something working against that green is all these high higher than average volume distribution candles however we can see when we've gone aggressive because of this parabolic move that changes the the pointing where the cloud turns from red to green so now our take profit is a lot uh, lower so we're making more money on this short so one point 17604 compared to that much higher uh, take profit on the moderate setting okay so just bear that in mind and then we'll talk about those rules so when the volume rules trump the bias cloud rules okay so aggressive profit taking so remember the the EMA um, bias cloud is for sort of conservative entry uh, exit sorry aggressive profit taking for potentially violent reversals and that's when the volume rules trump those bias cloud rules so this is another example here we've got day trading moderate setting on here we can see we've got a really big parabolic move here uh, with a red cloud coming up we can see the cloud is still red at this point but we get a big accumulation candle here with higher than average volume so this is a big candle it's closing near the highs it's got higher volume than the previous candle which did have higher volume than the previous candle to all that but it was a down candle uh, but was almost engulfing we've got higher than average volume that's the time to get out if you'd waited for the, the candle uh, the cloud to change uh, you would have not made as much profit because uh, you, 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 at this point you just you know you consider that this could be a violent move back up against that main trend and then on the other side we say we're in this long trade now you've got a, a the bias cloud is green at this point but we get a high volume distribution candle closing near the low here um, not only that it happens a second time this is a warning sign to get out now rather than wait for the cloud to change to red so this is where those sort of potentially violent reversals against uh, those um, those moves that trade that you're in 
happens, uh, the cloud will always take a little bit more time to react, and that's why we use it as a conservative trade management tool. Whereas if we're potentially getting these big violent moves, those violent moves are going to have accumulation or distribution candles, and they're going to have higher than average volume. And you know, a catalyst for this will be some data that affected like crude. Now, you may not understand that data, you may have missed that data, but the manager tells you something's happening. It is uh, changing direction, potentially. You know, accumulation of distribution and higher than average volume. So that's day trading um, moderate. So now, if we do day trading aggressive, for example, um, again, look at this. I'm going to mention this again, parabolic move, okay? And then we're going to go through the rules. So this parabolic move, you can see now, though, the cloud changes to green here, and we would actually get a better profit than waiting for that uh, candle here. So one thing we must know is when we're in a trade and we get a parabolic move, we must adjust that uh, setting to day trading aggressive so we can get out of the trade and maximize those profits uh, a lot earlier uh, with that cloud change. So again, understanding that's a parabolic move, changing the setting to aggressive would actually have made you more money than this warning sign for this violent reversal just here. Same again on here. We get the move up, we get the uh, move down here, we, that candle closes down at this point where my cursor is here. That's a sign there's a violent reversal. Uh, it does come back up again, but look where the cloud, you get another, uh, that another warning there. And then the cloud changes at this point here. So you can see by changing that um, to aggressive day trading, you do maximize those profits even more. But you've got to understand the move. It's, if it's a flat move uh, and you go aggressive, it could take you out too early. This is why we've got these different settings. So what can we learn from this? Again, pause, go back, watch those explanations. So when day trading your position has a parabolic move and go back look at those charts look what i say is a parabolic move the change the settings to day trading aggressive okay so when a when you're short trading and you get an accumulation green candle with higher than average volume aggressive profit taking is necessary so if you've forgotten uh, to change your cloud settings to aggressive um, or uh, the cloud is still and you've done that and the cloud is still in the direction of where you're going but you get and you're going short you get that accumulation green candle with a higher than average volume with that cyan dot above you need to be taking profit pretty damn quick because it is you know there's potential for that uh, violent reversal so when you're long trading is the opposite way round you get that red distribution candle uh, with higher than average volume that cyan that uh, above aggressive profit taking is necessary again the good thing about this being on youtube guys you can pause you can go back you can go through those explanations again so what about when you're swing trading so you're always going to start off on the swing trading setting okay as we have that longer term view when we're swing trading and you're looking for the instrument to build momentum over a longer period so typically you would use four hour daily and weekly time frames uh, when you are swing trading rather than the two, three, five, fifteen minute for day trading. So we're going to talk through some examples for this as well. So this is an expert signal. Um, you know, expert algo is um, it's my proprietary indicator to give you those signals for those longs, uh, and we can then note that we get some of those accumulation candles and higher than average volume. This is really, really good. So we're already in this trade, we're getting that. Uh, we're, you know, the, the, because we're in that swing trading setting, the actual cloud is still red, but we've got the signal. We need to manage that signal now. We're in the trade, we've got some good bullish momentum with accumulation candles and higher than average volume. Then we have a pullback, but the majority of these candles, remember each one is a day, there's no stress about when swing trading, but, sorry about that, um, 
majority of these candles are lower than average volume. This is a low volume pullback. And um, remember, the cloud is green here. Okay, the cloud is green. We do get some one candle wonders with higher than average volume and those distribution. But remember, when we're swing trading, we're giving time to build momentum. The cloud is still green. We're going to let it run. Then we get parabolic move almost straight up here. We get accumulation candles, higher than average volume candles. This thing goes. Look how the cloud then starts to move apart. Then we get a pullback, low volume pullback, lower than average dots, lower than average volume dots on the bottom. Okay, so this is standard profit taking, if you like. Uh, it's lower than average volume, so we're not too concerned. The cloud is getting wider. We still keep getting these, you know, these little pullbacks. It's lower than average volume. We get a little boost with higher than average volume and accumulation candles. Until finally, we, we, we're really, really up here on this wave three on the Elliott wave here. Uh, and there's, there's some options here. At this point here, we get higher than average volume distribution candle. Okay, it's engulfing that little indecision doji at the wave three. Uh, for those that uh, look at Elliott wave, if we go back during this wave three period, that happens once before here. Okay, it happens here. So it's not a sign to aggressively get out straight away, but they're not followed through. Now we're getting lower lows, lower highs, and it happens again twice. Tighten your stops or get out with that aggressive exit, but the cloud is still green, guys, and we're coming back on a wave four. For those that like me, you're not panicking. The cloud holds. It's green, we're still bullish. We then start to move away from that wave for low with accumulation candles. And then finally, although the cloud is getting thinner, it's still green, we start to get accumulation candles with higher than average volume. So it's moving back again. So two trains of thought when you swing trading. You've got in all the way down here at $26. You're starting to get some real big uh, moves down with higher than average volume distribution candles take your profit around $44 okay then if it finds support and starts to move back on a fifth wave move buy in again and then manage it with the cloud and the volume the average volume or the volume distribution or the combination that we've talked about so really this really helps you manage those swing trades sensibly you know, some people would like to get out near the highs, take the profit, wait for the wave for pull back, and then get back in and buy some more. That's fine. Uh, for me, if you're investing when you're using those swing trading strategies, and that that is, uh, you know, so it's a standard profit taking pullback if you like on that wave four, as long as that cloud remains green and you find good support in those uh, probability pullback zones, let it ride, and let it come back up again because it's behaving normally, and those candles allow you. Uh, and that bias cloud allows you to understand that. So this is a different type of uh, setting here. And what I want to do is go through where we change those settings when we have some parabolic moves and some, uh, some reactions to earnings or, or other data. So again, we've got a four, five, and six star X bad algo down on the left here. Really strong buy signals here, and we, we, we'd want to be getting in this trade here. Uh, so we're, we're in just about $25 or something like that, just where my cursor is here. We get low volume pullbacks here. The cloud is still green. This candle here is actually an accumulation candle, a bullish candle with higher than average volume. It rejects the lows and then starts to move up again. The cloud is still green. The cloud gets further and further apart. It's still green. But then we get our first parabolic move up here. Uh, we get low volume pullback because we're lower than average volume here. Then we get another parabolic move leading into earnings. This is the earnings uh, here. This is the reaction. So let's have a zoomed in look at that reaction. Now, a couple of things to point out. 
we had the gap up on earnings we tried to move higher and then it rejected those highs and actually closed lower than the open so this is a high volume rejection so not only is it a distribution candle that we talked about because it's colored in red it's higher than average volume this is a high volume rejection not just with distribution but with average volume as well this is an indication that this is the start of quite a severe pullback because that earnings reaction didn't want to push up more people wanted to sell in the end uh, look at those for the next day and then we start to come down and we pull back into there so recognizing that and using the manager to recognize that behavior is very very important and we'll go through that what we've learned section in a little while and you can see here though it does come down but using that swing trading setting we would get out around about you know fifty two dollars instead of the following day if it breaks the low of this rejection doji here getting out around about sixty eight dollars so there's a massive difference in that profit there so that behavior that gives you that warning sign that hey high volume rejection here on earnings uh, this is potentially a violent pullback so that's on the swing trading setting so recognizing that um, that behavior on earnings that we just discussed that high volume rejection here uh, you could change your setting to day trading conservative okay this would close the cloud around about fifty eight dollars okay so giving it room to move eventually the cloud changes at fifty eight dollars so that's a lot better than down here where it changed before around about fifty two dollars so that's that's better if you didn't go aggressive uh, that we've discussed before with that higher than average volume the distribution cloud indicating hey this is an aggressive exit to take max profits and you want to let it run just in case there's a bit of a rebound go to day trading conservative or what about going to day trading moderate setting in this case your profit would have been taken out around sixty two dollars here so you've got those settings but recognizing and again each one of these candles is a day so you don't need to be in front of the computer 24 hours a day to recognize this when swing trading um, you recognize that I'm going to say it again high volume rejection higher than average volume distribution candle after the earnings it's a sign it's coming down violently go to day trading moderate settings if you didn't take the aggressive exit and that would give you around about a sixty four dollar exit or something like that so a better exit than the actual conservative so you've got those settings it's recognizing what's happened and then adjusting um, as and when <clears throat> so what can we learn from this so when swing trading we must always look at volume reactions to earnings and other data flashpoints so you know when they have uh, you know, we have then options to adjust settings down to day trading settings or use that aggressive profit taking exit strategy when we are long and a red distribution candle occurs with higher than average volume that cyan dot above get out aggressively or when we are short we get that green accumulation candle that occurs uh, with a higher than average volume that cyan dot above again we want to go back go back again pause go back through that uh, those explanations but also remember we can actually use that uh, when we're when we're day trading as well because there's lots of data points during the day especially you know before or just after the US market opens there's big data points that can actually move things and if you're already in a trade or even during the European morning if you're in a trade and you get those high volume rejections and you get this same setting even if it's on a five minute time frame recognize that adjust accordingly aggressive or use that aggressive exit strategy to get your profits taken out so remember when day trading or swing trading there is usually a data or news catalyst that you know that reverses the move the manager soon spots those with either accumulation or distribution candles combining with that higher than average volume 
uh, you know, and usually a distinct candlestick formation rejecting those highs and lows. This is one of the most important things here. There is, there's a reason why things reverse. So if you're in a long, there's a reason why it starts to go short. And usually that catalyst produces higher than average volume and a, an accumulation or distribution candle. And the manager spots that and prints it on your chart so you can understand that you need to be either aggressive with that exit straight away or, in fact, change those settings. So don't second guess when you're managing trades. Follow the same rules. If you have the manager on your chart, you follow the manager's directions. That's why it's called the manager. He's there to help maximize profits. Hopefully this helps. Good explanations, pause, go back, simple rules. Follow those simple rules combining that average volume, distribution or accumulation and those cloud settings and you will start to see more consistent um, profits, more max maximizing those profits.